Tom Julian doesn't just write science fiction. He creates battlegrounds where humanity isn't just surviving, but fighting tooth and nail to stay on top. His Timberwolf series doesn't pull any punches. It's raw, intense, and takes place in a future where space isn't just a backdrop for adventure. It's an unforgiving, brutal force that will chew you up and spit you out if you're not prepared. Now, space fiction is full of stories where the tech is cool and the ships are shiny. But Julian, he's different. His universe is gritty and real, where the vacuum of space and the enemies lurking in it aren't just there to make the scenery look nice. They're a constant threat. Whether it's the endless void of space, hostile planets, or battles against enemies that never give up, this is where humanity's true strength shows. And that's where the Timberwolf series digs in, because it's not about perfect heroes. It's about humans who fight dirty, make mistakes, but still come out on top, because let's be honest, no one pushes through hell like we do. The thing that hits hardest about Julian's stories is the way he mixes action, tension, and real emotion into every scene. You're not just watching ships blast each other into pieces. You're watching people, flawed and fierce, putting everything on the line. These characters aren't gods. They're not indestructible. They screw up, they bleed, and they lose people along the way. But every step of the way, they're human to the core. And that's what makes the stakes feel real. Julian doesn't waste time with long-winded explanations or shiny monologues about the stars. No. In the Timberwolf series, every moment is a battle, either against an enemy or against the harsh, uncaring environment of deep space. You feel the weight of every decision because out there, one wrong move means it's over. The odds are always stacked against the characters, and they know it. But they're still going to fight. Why? Because they're human. And that's what we do. And let's talk about the military aspect. Julian gets that right, too. His stories are packed with tactical decisions, chain of command struggles, and the kind of teamwork that makes or breaks missions. But it's never over the top or unrealistic. It feels grounded, like you're part of a squad going into a war zone, trying to get through with as few casualties as possible. Every mission, every battle has consequences. Julian knows how to capture the chaos of combat while still showing the camaraderie and brotherhood that holds these teams together. In this video, we're going to break down exactly what makes Tom Julian's storytelling so powerful. We're going to look at how he builds these gritty, dangerous worlds where every breath could be your last. We'll dig into the way he writes action scenes that aren't just fast and intense, but packed with emotional weight. We'll see how he brings characters to life that feel real, characters you can root for, even when they're not perfect. And of course, we'll explore how he uses military tactics and strategy to add layers of tension and realism to his stories, making the stakes feel even higher. This isn't just another sci-fi writer doing what everyone else does. This is Tom Julian, and his stories are a masterclass in how to create sci-fi that hits hard, moves fast, and leaves you breathless. When you step into Tom Julian's universe, you're not just looking at a distant star or some random alien planet. You're thrown right into the thick of it, feeling every ounce of pressure from the environment. One of Julian's greatest strengths as a writer is his ability to create immersive living worlds where space isn't just a setting, but a living, breathing part of the story. In the Timberwolf series, space isn't a quiet, peaceful place. It's dangerous. It's hostile. The very atmosphere around you can kill, and it's always waiting for a chance to do just that. Planets like Enceladus aren't just pretty backdrops. They're threats. Icy, cold moons that throw you into harsh realities where one slip, one wrong move, and you're done for. The way Julian paints these locations makes you feel the weight of the environment pressing down on the characters. The crushing gravity, the freezing cold, the endless silent void. It all plays a role in the story. These are worlds where humans don't belong, and surviving them is a challenge in itself. Julian doesn't waste time explaining every little detail about the planets or the tech. He drops you in and lets you feel it. The way he describes the environment makes it clear. This is a universe where humanity is out of its element. But that's the point. In Timberwolf, the struggle isn't just against enemies. It's against the very nature of space itself. There's a reason humans aren't meant to be out here, and Julian never lets you forget it. 
What's brilliant about his world building is how it serves the story and the action. Take the setting of Enceladus, for example. It's not just an icy moon floating around Saturn. It's a battleground, a place where the environment itself becomes an enemy. Frozen geysers can erupt without warning, and gravity waves can throw even the best prepared soldiers off course. You're not just fighting enemies, you're fighting the terrain, the elements, the very laws of physics. The landscape is an active player in the story, shaping the way battles unfold, adding tension to every move the characters make. The world is out to get you just as much as the enemy is. And then there's the tech. Julian doesn't bombard you with endless techno babble, but the technology in his universe feels real. It's not all shiny and perfect, far from it. Ships are old, breaking down, barely holding together. The equipment is often failing at the worst possible moments, but that's what makes it relatable. It feels like you're riding in these rust bucket ships, sweating bullets while praying the thrusters hold out just long enough to make it through one more mission. The machinery is part of the struggle, and when it fails, it can turn an already dangerous situation into a desperate fight for survival. But Julian doesn't just stop at creating hostile environments or faulty technology. His world-building extends to the political and military landscapes, which are just as complex and unforgiving as space itself. His universe is filled with factions, rivalries, and uneasy alliances, all playing their parts in the larger conflicts. Whether it's corporations fighting over resources or military units trying to outmaneuver one another, there's always a sense that every decision has layers of consequence. It's never just a straightforward mission. There's always something lurking beneath the surface, ready to complicate the characters' lives. And this is where Julian's genius really shines. He doesn't just build worlds for the sake of spectacle. Every planet, every ship, every political rivalry serves the story. The hostile environments and malfunctioning equipment force characters to adapt, to make tough choices, and sometimes to sacrifice. The complexity of the world makes the stakes feel higher, and the characters' struggles feel more intense. Every time a character steps onto a new planet or enters a battle in a barely functioning ship, you feel the tension. You know the odds are stacked against them, and that's exactly how Julian wants it to be. In Timberwolf, you're not just along for the ride. You're right there in the middle of it, feeling the cold of space, hearing the creak of metal under stress, watching as geysers erupt from the ground and gravity waves threaten to tear everything apart. Julian's world-building puts you right there, alongside the characters, fighting for survival in a universe that wants to kill you at every turn. Action in Tom Julian's Timberwolf series isn't just about shooting lasers and explosions. It's about survival, precision, and split-second decisions where the wrong move gets you and your team killed. In every battle, in every fight, you can feel the weight of what's on the line, and Julian knows exactly how to make each one feel intense, personal, and real. His action scenes are fast, chaotic, and brutal, but they never lose sight of the characters or the stakes. One of the standout moments in Timberwolf is when the squad is operating outside their ship, balancing on the edge of life and death as they try to plant a nuclear device on a freighter. It's not a smooth operation, and that's what makes it so engaging. They're out there in the void, with nothing but thin suits separating them from instant death, and the environment is fighting them at every step. Suddenly, a gravity wave slams into them, sending them flying. They're not just struggling with their mission, they're fighting to stay alive as the very laws of physics seem to turn against them. You can feel the tension ramping up as every second passes. You know that one mistake means they're going to drift into nothingness, or worse, die from a malfunction in their suit. Julian's mastery here is his ability to build tension gradually, making the action feel earned. It's not about constant explosions or flashy heroics. It's about pacing. First, there's the eerie calm of space, the cold silence, the sense of isolation. Then, the mission kicks in, and everything that can go wrong does go wrong. The gravity wave that sends Timberwolf and his team spiraling out of control isn't just there for spectacle. It's a reminder that even when you're prepared, space doesn't care. One second, you're focused on the mission, 
and the next, you're fighting to hold on to anything you can, to stop yourself from floating away into oblivion. Julian makes you feel that panic, that sense of losing control. In Timberwolf, action isn't just about gunfights. It's about the environment. Every time Timberwolf and his team go into a situation, the environment is actively working against them. Whether it's the freezing cold of Enceladus, the unexpected eruptions of geysers, or the magnetic forces that pull their suits toward the hull of a dying freighter, it all adds layers of danger to the mission. And what makes it even more intense is that the characters know what's coming. They're trained for it. But no amount of training can prepare you for the chaos of battle in space. Take, for instance, the moment when Timberwolf realizes he's stuck to the hull of the Cairo Sunrise, magnetically locked down as the ship starts spinning out of control. His heart's pounding, but he doesn't panic. He knows his only chance of survival is to stay focused, to outthink the problem. And that's another thing Julian does brilliantly. He shows that strategy and thinking on your feet are just as important as physical strength in these moments. Timberwolf doesn't blast his way out of situations. He doesn't rely on brute force. He's calm, calculating, using his knowledge of the ship, of the tech, to find a way out. He uses his plasma cannon to short-circuit the ship, effectively disabling it. But that choice? It comes with risk. His own suit shuts down in the process leaving him vulnerable and out of oxygen. Every action has a consequence, and that's what keeps you on the edge of your seat. Julian also knows how to use teamwork to build tension. It's not just Timberwolf out there making decisions in a vacuum. He's got his squad, people who trust him with their lives, but who also have their own personalities, their own reactions to the chaos. Sandro, for instance, is the guy who steps up to save Timberwolf when everything's going to hell. He doesn't just follow orders blindly. He sees the situation, knows it's bad, and acts. But even then, there's no perfect rescue. Sandro's struggling too, blinded by ice and debris as they try to escape the gravity waves. The action becomes a shared struggle, not just for Timberwolf, but for everyone involved. That teamwork, that sense of relying on others while knowing they're fighting their own battles, raises the stakes. Let's not forget the personal stakes. Julian never lets the action feel detached from the character's emotions. It's not just about surviving. It's about what survival means for these characters. Timberwolf's decisions are influenced by the people he's trying to protect, the squad he's leading. Every time they're in danger, the weight of responsibility is clear on his shoulders. He's not just a soldier. He's their leader. And when things go wrong, he feels it. You can see it in the way he snaps at Grey when they're trapped on the freighter his voice tight with frustration and fear. He doesn't want to lose anyone, but out here that's always a possibility. And Julian lets you feel that weight, lets you see how the constant threat of death wears on Timberwolf and his team. Julian's action scenes are masterclasses in balancing chaos and control. You've got the chaos of space, gravity waves, explosions, ships spinning out of control, and you've got the characters trying to keep control, trying to complete their mission while everything falls apart around them. It's that tension, that balance between chaos and control, that makes each action scene so intense. You're never sure who's going to make it out, or if the mission's going to succeed. The stakes are always high, and the action keeps you guessing. In Timberwolf, you're not just watching a battle, you're living it. You feel the cold bite of space, the sudden jolt of a gravity wave hitting you, the desperate scramble to stay alive. Julian's action isn't just about big explosions. It's about survival, about fighting the odds when everything's stacked against you. And that's what makes his stories so damn compelling. Tom Julian doesn't just create characters that survive in space. He creates characters that live, fight, and grow under the constant threat of death. And it's this pressure that truly shapes them. In the Timberwolf series, every decision, every conflict, and every battle leaves its mark on the characters, making them more than just soldiers in a sci-fi universe. They're human beings, with all the flaws, fears, and strengths that come with it. At the heart of it all is Timberwolf himself, the kind of character who doesn't start out as a perfect hero. Far from it. Timberwolf is a man who's been through hell, and it shows. He's got scars, both physical and emotional, and those scars influence everything he does. He's a flawed protagonist, 
and that's exactly what makes him compelling. He's not fearless, and he's definitely not invincible. He makes mistakes, he doubts himself, but when the pressure's on, he steps up. Not because he's some perfect paragon of humanity, but because he knows that's what it takes to survive. One of the key things Julian does with Timberwolf is show how the weight of leadership affects him. He's not just out there fighting for his own survival. He's responsible for his squad. That responsibility is heavy, and it's clear in the way he carries himself. Every loss, every failure, it stays with him. There's a moment when Timberwolf is leading his team on a dangerous mission, and things go south fast. His team members are in danger, and the only way to get them out is to take a massive risk. Timberwolf knows that if he fails, they're dead, and the guilt of that possibility eats at him. He's carrying the burden of not just his own life, but the lives of those who trust him, and that pressure is relentless. Julian's characters aren't just defined by their actions in battle. They're shaped by their relationships with each other. Take Timberwolf and Gray, for example. Gray is the hard-nosed superior who knows how to command respect, but at the same time, there's a mutual understanding between him and Timberwolf. Gray trusts Timberwolf to make the right calls in the heat of the moment, but he also knows that Timberwolf's emotional investment in the team can cloud his judgment. The tension between doing what's best for the mission and protecting his team is a constant struggle for Timberwolf, and that inner conflict is what makes him feel real. And then there's Sandro. Sandro's relationship with Timberwolf is one of the most interesting dynamics in the series. Sandro isn't just a follower. He's a man who's willing to challenge orders when he feels it's necessary. He respects Timberwolf, but when push comes to shove, Sandro is the guy who'll step in and make the hard decisions, even if it means going against his leader's wishes. That moment when Sandro disobeys orders to save Timberwolf is a perfect example of how Julian uses character relationships to drive tension. Sandro doesn't just act out of duty, he acts because he values Timberwolf as a person, and that personal connection adds depth to what could have been a simple rescue scene. It's not just about saving a teammate, it's about saving a friend, someone he can't bear to lose. Julian also does something that's crucial in any great story. He shows how characters evolve over time. Timberwolf isn't the same person at the end of the story that he is at the beginning. The things he experiences, the choices he makes, they change him. He starts out as someone who's hardened by battle, someone who's seen too much death and destruction. But as the story goes on, you see moments where the cracks start to show. You see that underneath the armor of toughness, there's a man who's carrying the weight of everything he's been through. And by the end, he's changed. Not necessarily softer, but more aware of the cost of war. More aware of the people he's lost. And the people he's still fighting for. This is where Julian excels. He doesn't just throw his characters into action and leave it at that. He shows how every decision leaves an emotional impact. After every mission, every battle, there's a moment of reflection where you see the toll it's taken. The physical exhaustion is clear, but it's the emotional exhaustion that really stands out. The constant pressure of survival wears these characters down, and Julian never lets you forget that. You feel the fatigue, the doubt, the fear creeping in. But it's in those moments of vulnerability that the characters really shine. They're not superhuman. They're just human and that's what makes them so relatable. Take the scene where Timberwolf is stuck to the hull of the Cairo sunrise, knowing full well that the mission might end with him dead in space. It's not just the physical challenge that gets to him. It's the realization that his actions could lead to his team failing. The weight of that moment is crushing, and you can feel Timberwolf grappling with it in real time. He doesn't break down, he doesn't lose control, but you can sense the fear the doubt, and the pressure building inside him. And when he finally makes the decision to short-circuit the ship, it's not a triumphant moment. It's a calculated risk. He knows the dangers, and he takes them on anyway because that's what a leader has to do. Julian's characters are defined by their resilience, not because they're unbreakable, but because they keep going, even when everything is against them. They're scarred, they're beaten down, but they never stop. That's what makes Timberwolf and his team such compelling characters. They're not just fighting enemies, they're fighting themselves, their fears, their doubts, and their pasts. 
and every time they make it out alive, it feels like they've earned it. In the Timberwolf series, you're not just rooting for the characters because they're the good guys. You're rooting for them because you've seen their struggles, you've felt their pain, and you know that every battle, every decision, is shaping who they are. And by the end, you're not just invested in the outcome of the war, you're invested in the people fighting it. In the Timberwolf series, combat isn't just about pulling a trigger or charging into battle. It's about strategy, tactics, and leadership. Tom Julian crafts a universe where military precision is crucial for survival. And every move a soldier makes has to be calculated, disciplined, and part of a larger plan. It's not just about winning the battle. It's about surviving long enough to fight the next one. One of the first things you notice about Julian's approach to military dynamics is how real and grounded it feels, even in a futuristic setting. The chain of command isn't just a background detail, it's a critical part of the story. Characters like Timberwolf and Grey aren't just soldiers, they're leaders. And in Julian's world, leadership isn't about barking orders from a safe distance. It's about being in the trenches with your team, making life and death decisions in the heat of battle. Take Gray, for example. He's the commanding officer, and every move he makes is weighed down by the responsibility of keeping his squad alive. Julian shows us that leadership isn't just about making the right call. It's about living with the consequences of those calls. Gray is constantly weighing the mission against the lives of his men. He's tough, but not because he enjoys it. He's tough because he knows that out there, in the middle of a mission, hesitation or weakness can get people killed. When he has to make the call to pull back, even if it means leaving someone behind, you can see the strain it puts on him. He doesn't like it, but he knows that sometimes that's what leadership demands. It's a burden, and Julian makes sure you feel that weight through Gray's decisions. And then there's Timberwolf, who's leading his own team in the field. But his leadership style is different. He's right there in the action, facing the same dangers as the rest of his squad. That's one of the things that makes him such a compelling character. He's a leader, but he's also a soldier, and that duality is key to his growth throughout the series. In one mission, when everything goes wrong and they're facing a disaster, Timberwolf has to step up and take control. But what makes it interesting is that his decisions aren't perfect. He's human and the pressures of command push him to make tough choices, sometimes at the expense of the mission. You can see how the stress affects him, how it wears him down, but he keeps going because he knows his squad depends on him. What's especially brilliant about Julian's writing is how he makes the military structure feel both rigid and adaptable. There are rules, protocols, and a clear chain of command. But in the chaos of space warfare, those rules sometimes have to bend. One of the most memorable moments in the series comes when Sandro goes against orders to save Timberwolf. The command structure says one thing, but loyalty to a teammate says another. This moment creates tension between duty and personal loyalty, and Julian handles it masterfully. Sandro knows he's risking his career, but to him, saving a brother-in-arms is more important. It's these moments that show how Julian uses military dynamics not just to create action, but to explore the complexity of leadership and human relationships. The tactical side of Julian's world is just as intricate. Every battle, every skirmish is planned with military precision. It's not just about who has the bigger gun. It's about using the environment, outsmarting the enemy, and adapting to constantly changing conditions. In Timberwolf, Julian often shows us how important tactical decisions are, even in the most chaotic situations. Take the mission on Enceladus, for instance. The team isn't just dealing with enemy fire. They're dealing with the frozen, hostile landscape, where one wrong move could mean freezing to death or being caught in a geyser eruption. Timberwolf and his team have to think on their feet, using the terrain to their advantage while trying to complete the mission under brutal conditions. Julian doesn't shy away from showing the complexity of these decisions. The team is always adapting, always reassessing their situation, and it's these moments of tactical thinking that keep the reader on the edge of their seat. What makes these tactical scenes even more compelling is that they're not just about winning, they're about surviving.
Julian makes it clear that, in space, the odds are never in your favor. Even the best plans can go sideways in an instant, and the characters have to be ready to adapt or die. In one scene, Timberwolf and his team are laying down pickets, carefully setting up a perimeter when they're hit by a gravity wave. Suddenly, the plan falls apart, and they're scrambling to hold on to their positions. But this isn't some mindless scramble for survival. It's organized chaos. Timberwolf immediately shifts focus, issuing new orders, telling his team to adapt on the fly. That's where Julian excels, showing that even in the middle of disaster, the military structure holds. And it's the discipline and training of the characters that keeps them alive. Another aspect of Julian's military writing is how he shows the psychological toll that command takes on his characters. Timberwolf is constantly weighing his decisions, knowing that the lives of his team are in his hands. Gray, too, feels the strain of command, especially when he has to order his men into dangerous situations. Julian doesn't gloss over the fact that leadership in these scenarios comes with a heavy burden. You can see it in the way Gray hesitates before giving a critical order, or in the way Timberwolf takes responsibility when things go wrong. It's not just about the action. It's about the emotional and mental cost of being a leader in a world where death is always one step behind. But leadership isn't just about making tough calls. It's about trust. In the Timberwolf series, there's a constant tension between following orders and trusting your instincts. Timberwolf trusts his team, and they trust him. That trust is what allows them to act quickly, decisively, in the heat of battle. But Julian also shows how that trust can be tested. When Sandro disobeys orders, it's not because he doesn't trust Timberwolf, it's because he trusts him so much that he's willing to risk everything to save him. This dynamic of trust, loyalty, and command is what makes the military aspect of Julian's universe so compelling. It's not just about following orders, it's about knowing when to break them, when to take risks, and when to put your team's survival above everything else. In the end, Julian's military structure isn't just a backdrop for the action. It's an essential part of the story. The chain of command, the tactical decisions, the weight of leadership, they all shape the characters and the world they live in. In Timberwolf, being a soldier isn't just about fighting. It's about making impossible decisions in impossible situations and living with the consequences. And that's what makes it so gripping. Every battle, every mission, every order feels real, because Julian understands what it takes to lead and survive in a universe where one wrong move could mean the end. In Tom Julian's Timberwolf series, the battles may be fought in space, but the real conflict often lies in the hearts and minds of the characters. The tension in these stories isn't just about who's going to win the next firefight. It's about what those fights cost the people involved. Julian doesn't just throw his characters into action without consequences. Every fight, every mission leaves a mark, and the emotional weight is what makes the story feel real. One of the most striking aspects of Julian's writing is how he intertwines emotional stakes with the action. When Timberwolf and his team are out there, fighting against overwhelming odds, it's not just about completing the mission. It's about surviving with their humanity intact. The characters are constantly faced with decisions that test their loyalty, their morality, and their ability to keep going, even when everything seems lost. And it's in those moments that Julian shines, because he knows how to hit the reader where it hurts, through the character's emotional struggles. Take Timberwolf, for example. He's a hardened soldier, but underneath that toughness, there's a vulnerability that Julian carefully unpacks as the story progresses. Timberwolf isn't just battling enemies, he's battling his own guilt and fear. The missions he leads aren't just physical challenges, they're emotional gauntlets. He knows that every time he steps into the void, he might not come back. But what weighs on him even more is the fear that he might lose one of his team. This isn't a leader who views his squad as disposable. For Timberwolf, every soldier he loses is a failure that he carries with him and that weight affects every decision he makes. There's a scene where Timberwolf and Sandro are trapped in a dangerous situation, cut off from their team and barely holding on. In that moment, you can feel the fear and desperation between them, not just the fear of dying, but the fear of failing each other. 
Timberwolf knows that if he dies, he's not just losing his own life, he's losing the trust his team has in him, and that's what makes it personal. Julian uses these moments to show that the characters aren't just soldiers, they're people, with real emotions, real connections, and real consequences for every choice they make. Sandro, too, carries emotional baggage throughout the series. He's the kind of character who steps up when things get rough, but there's always an underlying tension between his sense of duty and his personal relationships. Sandro's decision to save Timberwolf, even when it means going against orders, isn't just an act of heroism. It's a deeply personal decision rooted in his bond with Timberwolf. This isn't just about saving a soldier. It's about saving a brother. That bond, that loyalty, is what drives Sandro, and it's also what creates conflict within him. He knows that going against orders could cost him his career, but in that moment, the personal stakes outweigh the professional ones. And that's the beauty of Julian's writing. He understands that real stakes aren't just about life and death. They're about relationships, loyalty, and the emotional toll of war. The Timberwolf series is packed with moments like this, where the emotional gravity is just as intense as the physical danger. Julian doesn't let his characters breeze through these challenges unscathed. Every victory comes at a cost, and those costs are felt long after the battle is over. Whether it's the strain of command weighing on Grey, or the personal losses Timberwolf endures, the characters are constantly reminded that survival in space doesn't come cheap. It comes with sacrifice, sometimes of their bodies, but more often of their souls. Even Grey, the no-nonsense commanding officer, isn't immune to the emotional stakes. While he may seem like the tough, unyielding leader on the surface, Julian gives us glimpses of the man beneath the uniform. Gray's decisions aren't always clean-cut, and you can see the internal conflict in moments where he has to weigh the mission against the lives of his men. In one key moment, Gray is forced to give an order that will likely result in casualties, and the toll it takes on him is evident. He may not show it outwardly, but Julian allows us to see the cracks in his armor. It's these moments that remind us that even the toughest soldiers are still human. Julian also uses silence and stillness to create emotional depth. In the middle of all the chaos, there are moments where the characters are left alone with their thoughts, their regrets, and their fears. These quiet moments are just as powerful as the action because they give the characters and the readers a chance to process what's happened. After a particularly brutal mission, you'll see Timberwolf sitting in the quiet of a debrief room, staring at his hands, replaying the decisions he made and the ones he couldn't. It's in these moments that Julian lets the emotional gravity sink in. The characters may survive, but they're never the same. And that's what makes the story so compelling. Julian doesn't let anyone walk away clean. The scars, both physical and emotional, are there to stay. Another example is the way Julian handles loss and grief. Characters in Timberwolf don't just shrug off the death of a comrade. The grief is palpable, and it lingers. There's a scene where Timberwolf is forced to leave a fallen soldier behind, and it haunts him. Julian doesn't rush through this moment. He lets it breathe. Timberwolf's guilt, his sense of failure, it follows him, and you can see how it changes him. It's not just a plot point, it's a turning point for the character, and that's what makes Julian's emotional stakes so powerful. They're not just things that happen in the story, they're things that shape the characters, change them, and drive their decisions moving forward. Julian's ability to blend action with emotion is what sets his stories apart. The stakes are never just physical. They're deeply personal. Every battle, every mission, isn't just about completing the objective. It's about who you're doing it for and what it will cost you. And in the end, that's what makes the Timberwolf series so gripping. It's not just about whether the characters live or die. It's about how they carry the weight of survival. Because in Julian's world, survival is never without its scars. Tom Julian's Timberwolf series isn't just about the people or the action. It's also about the technology and the spectacle that comes with fighting for survival in deep space. From the massive rusted hulks of ships to the deadly power of plasma cannons, Julian knows how to make technology feel both futuristic and gritty, like it's been used, abused, 
and pushed to its limits in the most hostile environments imaginable. One of the things that stands out in Julian's writing is how he makes the technology in his universe feel real and tangible. There's a weight to it, a sense that every piece of gear, every ship, every weapon has a story. They aren't just shiny, perfect tools. They're worn, battle-scarred, and unreliable, just like the people who use them. Timberwolf and his crew don't fly around in sleek, invincible spaceships. They're often stuck in old, barely functioning vessels that could fall apart at any moment. The ships creak, groan, and sometimes fail, adding a layer of tension to every mission. You can almost hear the hum of the engines struggling to stay online, feel the shudder of a ship as it breaks through an asteroid field or skims the atmosphere of some hostile moon. It's this sensory immersion that makes the world feel real and the stakes feel high. Take the ship Cairo Sunrise, for instance. It's not the shiny, sleek spacecraft you'd expect in many sci-fi stories. It's a rusted freighter, old and unreliable, with spindly towers jutting off the superstructure like afterthoughts. Julian describes it as being held together more by luck and necessity than any kind of advanced engineering, and that's part of the charm. The Cairo Sunrise isn't just a setting. It's a character in its own right, with its creaky, unpredictable nature adding to the tension. When Timberwolf's team is forced to plant a nuclear device on the hull of this beast, you're not just worried about the enemy, you're worried about the ship itself. Will it hold together long enough for them to complete the mission? Will it tear apart under the strain of the gravity waves? The ship's failing systems become part of the danger, and that's where Julian's tech really shines. It's not just there to look cool. It adds to the story's tension and drama. Julian also knows how to use weapons and gear in a way that feels grounded, even in a futuristic setting. It's not all about lasers and plasma, though there's plenty of that too. The gear is practical, functional, and often unreliable. Take Timberwolf's plasma cannon, for example. It's not some flawless, overpowered weapon that guarantees victory in battle. It's a tool, and like any tool, it has its limitations. When Timberwolf uses it to short-circuit the Cairo Sunrise, he knows it's a risky move. The cannon's power surge knocks out his suit systems, leaving him stranded without life support in the middle of a hostile mission. The technology creates as many problems as it solves, and that's what makes it feel real. It's powerful, but it's dangerous, unpredictable, and always one malfunction away from disaster. But Julian doesn't just focus on the hardware. He also gives attention to the futuristic environments his characters operate in, creating stunning visual spectacles that transport readers into the heart of the action. One of the standout elements of Timberwolf is how vividly Julian paints the alien landscapes and space environments. Take Enceladus, for instance, a frozen moon orbiting Saturn, with its icy surface pocked by dark craters and spewing geysers of water vapor into space. Julian's descriptions make you feel the biting cold, the isolation, the overwhelming vastness of the universe pressing down on the characters. It's not just about fighting the enemy, it's about surviving the environment itself, and the vivid descriptions of the frozen world make you feel the danger on a visceral level. Then there's Saturn itself, looming in the sky like a giant, pale monster. Julian describes it as both beautiful and menacing, with its dull cream and orange bands taking up half the sky. It's not the glorified, romanticized version of Saturn you might expect. It's real and raw, a massive world that exerts an unforgiving gravitational pull on everything around it. When Timberwolf's team gets hit by a gravity wave, it's not just a cool visual. It's a gut-wrenching moment, where you can feel the characters losing control, being tossed around like rag dolls in the unforgiving void. The way Julian writes these moments, makes the universe feel alive and dangerous. The characters aren't just floating through space. They're at the mercy of forces far beyond their control. And it's those forces that make the story's stakes feel real. Julian's world-building extends to the small, sensory details that immerse you fully in the story. It's not just the big, epic moments that stand out. It's the little things, like the sound of a suit's oxygen system hissing quietly in the silence of space or the flicker of a failing display screen inside a ship's cockpit. These details make the technology and environments feel lived in, adding layers of realism to the story. 
When Timberwolf is trying to repair a malfunctioning device or struggling to free himself from a magnetic hold on the ship, you can feel his frustration, his desperation. The technology isn't just a tool for the characters. It's something they have to fight against, something that complicates their lives at every turn. And that's another key aspect of Julian's technological writing. It's never perfect. In many sci-fi stories, technology is portrayed as flawless, advanced beyond the character's wildest dreams. But in Timberwolf, the tech is flawed, just like the people who use it. Ships break down, weapons malfunction, and equipment fails at the worst possible moments. But that's what makes it exciting. It's not just about what the characters can do with their tech. It's about how they adapt when it doesn't work. When the ship's thrusters fail, when the gravity stabilizers shut down, when the suits run out of oxygen, those are the moments when the story shines. The technology is a tool, yes, but it's also an obstacle, and Julian uses it brilliantly to create tension and push the characters to their limits. Finally, Julian's use of visual spectacle is what makes his action scenes so gripping. When ships explode in space, it's not just a light show, it's a devastating moment that rocks the characters to their core. Julian describes explosions as silent but terrifying, with debris scattering through the void, deadly shards of metal spinning uncontrollably. When the Cairo sunrise finally goes down, it's not just a ship falling apart. It's a catastrophic event, with the ship's wreckage plummeting into the surface of Enceladus, triggering geysers of ice and vapor that erupt into the sky. These moments are described with such vivid detail that you can picture them clearly, as if you're watching it happen right in front of you. Julian's ability to mix science fiction technology with powerful visuals is what makes his stories feel so cinematic and immersive. In Timberwolf, the technology, the ships, the weapons, they're not just background props. They're integral to the story, shaping the action, driving the tension, and adding layers of danger that keep you on edge. The environments, from the freezing surface of Enceladus to the rusting hulls of broken-down ships, aren't just places. They're challenges the characters have to face and survive. And it's that blend of technology, visual spectacle, and sensory detail that makes Julian's universe feel so alive, so dangerous, and so real. One of Tom Julian's biggest strengths in the Timberwolf series is how he keeps you on edge, constantly guessing what's going to happen next. His storytelling is packed with twists and turns that not only escalate the action, but also challenge the characters in unexpected ways. What makes his plot progression so engaging is that the danger is never just what's in front of the characters. It's often what they don't see coming. Julian knows how to pull the rug out from under you, just when you think you've figured out where the story is going. Julian's twists aren't just thrown in for shock value. They're carefully woven into the plot building tension as the story unfolds. Every mission feels like it's going according to plan until suddenly it isn't. One minute the team is setting up a nuclear device on the Cairo sunrise, thinking they have the upper hand. The next minute, a gravity wave slams into them, completely derailing their mission and sending the team into chaos. This kind of unexpected disruption is what Julian excels at. He doesn't let his characters settle into a routine or feel safe for long. Just when you think they've got everything under control, something shifts, and now they're fighting to survive a whole new threat. Take the gravity waves as a perfect example. You'd expect the biggest danger to be from enemy fire or some kind of technical malfunction, but no. Julian throws in the unexpected force of Saturn's gravitational pull. It's not something the characters can fight or predict, and that's what makes it so terrifying. These twists aren't just about action. They change the entire dynamic of the mission. The team goes from executing a carefully planned strategy to scrambling for survival. These moments keep you glued to the story because you know anything can happen at any time. And it's not just the physical challenges. Julian is a master at creating moral and psychological twists, too. The characters are constantly forced to make choices that don't have easy answers, and those choices often come back to haunt them in surprising ways. For example, when Sandro disobeys orders to save Timberwolf, it creates a ripple effect that extends far beyond that single moment. Sure, he saved his friend, 
but now he's put his career on the line, strained his relationship with his commanding officer, and set off a chain of events that complicates everything. Julian uses these moral dilemmas to add layers of tension to the story, showing that the real cost of survival isn't always paid in blood. It's often paid in trust and loyalty. These plot twists aren't just about shaking up the action. They're about revealing character. Every time the story takes an unexpected turn, you learn more about who these characters really are. How they react under pressure, how they deal with betrayal or failure, these are the moments that define them. When Timberwolf is faced with impossible odds, you see him dig deep, not just to survive, but to protect his team. And when Gray is forced to make a call that might cost lives, you see the weight of command pressing down on him, forcing him to make decisions that no one should have to make. These twists push the characters to their limits, and it's in those moments of crisis that you see who they really are. One of the most memorable plot twists in Timberwolf comes when the Cairo Sunrise, after being disabled and seemingly out of the fight, suddenly reactivates. The ship's thrusters fire up, and it starts to descend toward Enceladus, completely out of control. This isn't just a random twist thrown in to create tension. It's a moment that completely shifts the stakes. Suddenly, the team's mission isn't just about survival. It's about stopping a catastrophic crash that could destroy them and the moon they're orbiting. The stakes go from high to astronomical in the blink of an eye, and you're left wondering how the characters are going to pull off a victory when everything is falling apart. Julian also knows how to use slow-burning twists where the full impact of a decision isn't felt until much later in the story. These moments are often the most satisfying because they catch you off guard when you least expect it. A decision made early in the story, like trusting an unreliable piece of tech or choosing to bypass a safety protocol, suddenly comes back to bite the characters at the worst possible moment. It's the kind of plotting that rewards attention to detail, and Julian makes sure that nothing is forgotten. Every choice, every action has consequences, and those consequences can explode into the story at any time. This is especially true with the characters' personal relationships. The bonds between the team members are tested repeatedly throughout the series, and just when you think you know where things are headed, Julian throws in a twist that changes everything. Whether it's a betrayal, a secret revealed, or a moment of unexpected loyalty, the relationships between the characters are always evolving, often in ways you don't see coming. These emotional twists are just as powerful as the physical ones, because they hit the characters where they're most vulnerable, their hearts and minds. Another key aspect of Julian's plot progression is that he isn't afraid to let the heroes fail. There are moments when Timberwolf and his team don't succeed, when the mission falls apart despite their best efforts. These failures aren't just there to create drama, they serve to show the character's growth. Failure in Julian's world isn't the end, it's the beginning of a new challenge. When a plan goes wrong, the team has to adapt, rethink their strategy, and find a way to move forward. These moments of failure are where the real tension lies, because they force the characters to question themselves, to push harder, and to find new ways to succeed against the odds. Julian also plays with time and pacing, keeping you off balance by shifting the story's speed at critical moments. Just when you think the characters have a little breathing room, Julian ramps up the pace, throwing them into another crisis before they've fully recovered from the last one. This relentless progression keeps you hooked, making it impossible to look away, because you never know when the next twist is coming. One minute, Timberwolf is strategizing with his team. The next, they're hit with a barrage of unexpected challenges, from enemy attacks to equipment failure to the unpredictable forces of nature around them. The tension builds and builds until it feels like it's going to snap, and that's when Julian drops the next bombshell twist. At its core, the Timberwolf series is about survival in a world that's constantly shifting, where nothing is certain and everything can change in an instant. Julian's plot progression mirrors this unpredictability. The characters aren't just reacting to a series of planned events, they're constantly adjusting to new realities, new dangers, and new stakes. It's what makes the story feel alive, constantly moving, and always one step ahead 
of both the characters and the reader. And the best part? Even after all the twists and turns, Julian knows how to bring the story full circle, tying up loose ends while still leaving enough open to make you hungry for more. Every twist, every surprise serves a purpose, leading to a satisfying conclusion that feels earned. But even then, Julian never lets you feel too comfortable, because in his world, the danger never really ends. There's always another twist just waiting to strike. You're never sure if the ships, weapons, or gear will hold up under pressure, and that uncertainty is what makes the story feel so real. His action scenes aren't just there to dazzle, they're filled with emotional weight. Whether it's a frantic scramble to escape a malfunctioning ship or a brutal firefight in zero gravity, the action always serves a purpose. Every fight, every narrow escape pushes the characters further, revealing new sides of them and showing how they grow under pressure. Julian doesn't just use action to entertain. He uses it to test his characters, to push them to their breaking points, and to force them to make choices that will define who they are going forward. And those characters? They're the heart of the series. Timberwolf isn't just another sci-fi hero. He's flawed, human, and constantly dealing with the weight of command, the fear of losing his team, and the guilt of the decisions he's made. Julian doesn't sugarcoat the emotional toll that leadership takes. You see it in every interaction, every moment of doubt, and every hard choice that Timberwolf and his squad face. They aren't just fighting enemies. They're fighting their own fears, their own insecurities, and the overwhelming odds that are stacked against them. That's what makes you care about them. They're real, they're vulnerable, and they feel the same doubts and fears that anyone in their position would. Julian also does something few sci-fi writers manage. He blends military precision with emotional stakes. The chain of command, the tactical decisions, the way the characters rely on each other in the heat of battle. It's all written with a sense of authenticity that makes the stakes feel real. But at the same time, Julian never loses sight of the personal. The relationships between the characters, the trust they build and sometimes break, and the sacrifices they make for each other are what give the series its heart. You don't just want to see them succeed, you want to see them make it out alive because you're invested in who they are as people. And of course, there are the plot twists, those moments that completely shift the direction of the story. Whether it's a sudden betrayal, a mission gone horribly wrong, or a technical failure at the worst possible moment, Julian keeps you guessing. The stakes are never static. They're always rising, always evolving, and that's what keeps the tension high. In Timberwolf, you can never predict what's coming next, and that unpredictability is what makes the story so thrilling. But perhaps the most impressive thing about Julian's writing is how he brings all of these elements together into a cohesive whole. The world building, the action, the characters, the military dynamics, the plot twists, they all feed into each other, creating a story that feels both epic in scope and deeply personal at the same time. Julian understands that no part of the story exists in isolation. The environment affects the characters, the characters affect the plot, and the plot twists force everyone to adapt. It's this interconnectedness that makes the Timberwolf series so compelling. As we wrap up, it's clear that Tom Julian's approach to sci-fi is something special. He combines gritty realism with futuristic technology, emotional depth with high-stakes action, and complex characters with a constantly shifting plot. His stories remind us that the best science fiction isn't just about exploring the stars. It's about exploring what it means to be human, especially when the odds are stacked against us. So, whether you're a sci-fi fan looking for your next great read, or a writer seeking inspiration, there's a lot to learn from Tom Julian's work. He shows us that the heart of every great story lies in the people who fight, survive, and grow in the face of impossible odds. The Timberwolf series is a testament to the power of character-driven storytelling, and it's a reminder that in the cold, dangerous void of space, it's our humanity that will always define us.